they can access the presentation. We do value your feedback as part of our efforts to do continuous improvement, so you should be getting a questionnaire at the end, and we would really value your comments and suggestions. Um, we take those very seriously. So this morning, we are going to be hearing um, from a few folks, principally Vincent Pirelli. Some of you may know him. He's with the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services. He's Chief of Planning and Policy at the agency. Um, Vince and I have the distinction of being almost uh, working for our various organizations for about the same period of time, which is pretty amazing. Um, so I've known Vince for 27 years, which is really <laughs> remarkable. Um, he started out his work uh, at the agency focused on hazardous waste related issues, particularly hazardous waste reduction, and his work on hazardous waste sort of helped evolve um, into the creation of New Hampshire's uh, Pollution Prevention Program. It was, he really helped, or he was the person who really initiated that program, and he worked on that program for almost 10 years. And it, after about 10 years, he, he transitioned into his current position working in the Office of Commissioner. Um, he's now in the role of uh, working uh, in the Planning Prevention and Assistance Unit. Um, he coordinates DES-wide planning, management, measurement systems. He works on quality assurance, operations, performance partnership agreements, performance measurement, continuous improvement, and lean. He is a founding member of DES's lean team, and he's been an active, actively involved in lean for many years. He has a lean green belt certification, and he's done many lean events in the agency. And um, I think this work that um, he's going to talk about today is really an evolution of all of his efforts um, to um, implement lean within the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services. We're also going to hear some from the EPA uh, Region 1 New England folks who were involved in this, particularly Christy Ray Simino. And um, I'm going to have Vince or she introduce her, since I, I don't have so much information about her involvement. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Vince. I'm going to make him the presenter. And we will get underway. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. This is Vince. As Terry said, thank you, Terry, so much for, for uh, introducing us today, making this webinar uh, possible. I want to thank you for your leadership on our Northeast Lean Network or Lean Practitioners Group or whatever we're calling ourselves, and again, for making this call happen today. You, we have worked together for a very long time, and uh, you've been a great friend to the states and EPA for, for the, uh, that whole duration, so thank you very much. And Christy, I look forward to um, presenting with you today. Um, I want, can I give you just a few moments to talk a little bit about yourself. I know that you are the chief of, um, actually I'm going to go ahead and um, let you introduce yourselves for a moment and then we'll kind of dive right in. Chris, you got a moment? Vince, why don't you Good pull morning. up your slides while she's doing that? I will do that. Sorry, Christy, okay. go ahead. My pleasure. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Christy Ray Simino. I'm the chief of grants, tribal, and community programs at EPA New England. I've been with the agency for about 17 years and my unit oversees the performance partnership grants to the six New England states, uh, grants and cooperative agreements to the 10 federally recognized tribes in New England, and also community-based environmental protection work and competitive grants. And I'm joined today by Lucy Casella and Jen Brady, who were integral parts of the SharePoint uh, experience and the LEAN event today. So thank you for having us. Great. Thank you so much, Christy and Lucy and Jen and the rest of the team. I appreciate you being on the call today, and, and uh, it was a great uh, time working with all of you for over a year and a half on, on this um, joint lean event. So um, so let's dive in. I want to first thank uh, everyone for taking time out of your busy schedules to learn a bit more about the lean work we did, again, between our agency, EPA New England, at the, at the start, and then um, I want to share with you how this effort expanded to the five other New England state agencies um, for the work we conducted last year. I hope you find that presentation interesting. Christy and I, along with some of our fellow teammates, are able to be on this call this morning. Look forward to answering any questions you might have on the work that we did together. So, so let's sort of dive in. Before I do that, I wanted to um, 
do the obligatory tell you what I'm going to tell you, as they say. So here's the agenda that I will be following today. Hopefully everyone can see it okay on the screen. This seems to be a good way to progress through our Lean project with you, and I just and I do hope it works for everyone. This is sort of a similar format to the last uh, Lean event webinar with the, I think it was a uh, Mass DEP, EPA RECRA program initiative. So before I begin, I, I'd like to, to go into a little background for you, uh, for those who are not directly familiar with this project and some of the terminology. So please indulge me for a couple of minutes so that I can lay some groundwork for you. So there's, a, there's sort of a lot of um, pieces of the puzzle here, and I think you need to hear them before we um, sort of dive right into the Lean event itself. And all of this sort of builds as we go along. So I wanted to give you some background. And there, there was a bunch of things happening simultaneously uh, that eventually led to our Lean event with EPA New England, again, ultimately with the expanded group of our sister environmental agencies across New England. It was a perfect storm of sorts, or maybe more positively, the planets seemed to be in alignment, hence the graphic, if you can follow that. A formal Lean program was just getting off the ground in New Hampshire in late two, uh, 2008 and early 2009 when DES began its own Lean journey with a week-long round of Lean training for several staff, including our very own Commissioner Tom Burek, who's still with us t today. That's a pretty, lo pretty long tenure for a commissioner. Over the last few years, DES has conducted a number of internal Lean projects, and we really started to get the hang of things. Um, it is a long journey. We're about six years, seven years in, and um, we're still students. You know, it, it's a, again, it's a very long journey. Starting in 2012-13, after some lean events under our belt, we had been discussing with EPA uh, the possibility of doing a joint lean event with them. Not sure on what exactly, but we felt it was important to start doing work together. But they were just not there yet in terms of internal tra training or capacity or, or didn't have sort of formal lean um, programs in place just yet. Plus, there were some organizational and staff changes brewing at EPA related to how the various PPA work plans and PPG processes were to be administered in the coming years, and I'll talk about that in a few moments. In 2013, at the request of then regional, uh, Assistant Regional Administrator Ira Layton, EPA initiated a new focused strategic investment disinvestment process where states could propose innovative ideas and, and EPA would consider various trade-offs or disinvestments and provide flexibility to states to, to carry them out. And uh, many of you on this call have been through that, directly uh, been involved in that process. And it was through this process that Ira, who is greatly missed, by the way, by, by many of the states and EPA, was hoping for those twofers and threefers for which he was so well known. If you remember, that uh, he, he really wanted to maximize uh, benefits where he, where he could. So a couple more uh, baseline pieces here. In addition to some other strategic investment requests, in I think it was 14, uh, DES and included a proposal for DES and EPA New England to finally work together on a joint lean event. And at the time, we said we wanted to focus it on a mutually agreeable process or program. We didn't specify, but we said it could be on PPA development, annual work plans, progress reporting, PPG application and award processes, climate change mitigation, or a particular permit program, federal database, or inspection program. So we really left it wide open. We knew we wanted to do a, an improvement process together after you know, 20 plus years, uh, I was pretty sure that there were things that could be improved. So um, we, we uh, and at that point, um, EPA was more ready to, to work with us on a joint lean event. So, by, uh, so we did agree to take this on. Around this time, we'd also requested a one-year extension of our three-year uh, FY 12 to 14 PPA. Uh, among other things, to buy us some time to work on some improvements to the PPA and planning processes, better understand the staffing and organizational changes that were just happening at EPA around that time frame, and also to get our, to know our new partners at EPA before diving right, right in. When I say new, I don't mean brand new to the agency. I mean new in, in some of these roles. Christie has been there 17 years, and as many other people, and been there m many more years than that. So new, but not brand new. Finally, the timing of the lean event request was good, that it was taking place right around the time we needed to begin working on the PPA, the associated work plans, and the PPG. Perhaps this was actually a mixed blessing, as I'll describe under the lessons learned, but all the planets aligned to get this project underway. I'm going to give you um, next a problem statement, sort of uh, capturing all those pieces of the puzzle and, and showing you how we took all that and built a problem statement that ultimately was uh, brought into our formal charter, which I'll talk about. So the next, uh, the next thing I want to talk about again is the problem statement. I'm going to caveat by saying this is uh, much of my opinion about sort of why we dove into this project and sort of where we're at. We've been working together on PPAs and PPGs for EPA for a long time, since 97 actually, 
And after that much time with interrelated complex processes, it certainly was time for change and, and it was definitely ripe for it. And we had the usual issues at DES, too much to do, too little, too little time to do it. We often say we're doing more with less, but in reality, uh, we're doing less with less, but that just doesn't sound as nice. Aren't we all fortunate that Lean is a proven capacity building tool that's ready available, readily available to all of us and at our disposal to help us uh, find more time to do the things that need to get done? So back then, uh, from our perspective as a state agency customer, from the customer services uh, perspective, uh, the service delivery model had changed at EPA New England, we, we felt. Basically, the PPA and PC, PNC processes were consolidated into the already very busy Grants Tribal Community Programs Unit back in 2014. So already too much to do, and now they added a whole bunch of things to their plate. It felt very bad for them. For reference, New Hampshire, like many other states on this webinar, went from two dedicated EPA planning liaisons in the early days of planning to sort of one person down to half a person who was shared with another state, I guess at the time to a somewhat unknown arrangement, or at least it wasn't well understood by DES at the time. And I, I guess that we got spoiled with lots and lots of attention in the past, but there just wasn't time for that anymore. Some processing consistencies emerged. Uh, what worked well before maybe didn't work so well then. Our communications changed maybe a little less two-way than they were in the past. Everyone was just so busy. And through no fault of the current staff, EPA's ability to really roll up their sleeves and partner with the states uh, seemed to be hampered. It's just, again, a very small group with a very large charge, very expanded charge. There's less capacity at both agencies for joint problem solving, and overall response time seemed to increase. So if I had to capture our problem statement in a single phrase, I guess I would say the DES and EPA New England had deviated from a previously successful joint governance model. That's a mouthful, and this is something that folks at the E-Enterprise for the Environment community talk about all the time, the importance of joint governance. So that's the problem statement. I'm going to go a couple more slides, and then I'm going to take a little break to get some questions, if that's okay. Terry, are you hearing anything in the chat that uh, describes uh, that we should unmute and, and um, get anything answered at this juncture? Are we still good to go? Vince, I don't have any chat comments, so Very keep good. going. I'm going to plow on through. Thank you for indulging me. So let's talk about how we um, bounded the event. Um, it's many times it's called bookending, if you can sort of get that analogy. Uh, because if you take on everything, you will get nothing done, as, you find, as I tend to find out every day at work. So let's talk about how we bounded this event and scoped it. With EPA agreement to proceed on the joint lean event, we first met to scope out how best to, to get this event so it's um, uh, in a, a bite size so we can actually be successful. And originally, we discussed all of the major planning components of the planning processes, which included strategic planning, budgeting, the national program manager's guidance process, PPAs, P&C list, for the P&C list rather, for those who don't know, that's a priorities and commitments list in Region 1. That's our work plan. Uh, the performance partnership grants which funds all of that, st the strategic investment disinvestment process, our own internal um, measures database to where, where we put our detailed work plans, and EPA's ACS, or I think it's annual commitment system database. So we, we went to the 35,000 foot level to describe all the pieces so that we can figure out which ones we're going to tackle. And that's the power of Lean is that you, you make it manageable by tightly bounding what you can take on. Because if you take on a small piece, you, you, you can accomplish it realization that there were very many, many moving parts here, and through this critical scoping meeting, both agencies agreed to focus just on the PPA and the work plan, or the P&C list processes. The PPG and all the other related uh, processes, very intimately bound to all this, um, were, were purposely separated out for future conversations, with the exception of referencing the PPG and other pieces where they were necessary because, again, they were so intimately tied to this very large interrelated complex planning process our system. I should note that while the PPG was specifically sort of out of bounds for the lean event, event, it did pop up. We ultimately did have a number of side conversations that ultimately or eventually led to a decision being made regarding how to better align the PPA, the PNC list, and the PPG, something that was very important to EPA New England at the time. We, with agreement on how to proceed, a charter for the event was drafted. And these continue, as I'm sure you're aware, to be an essential component of any lean process. And you already know this, but never try to cut corners by skipping this critical step. That in that charter, you basically can ensure or, or, or um, ensure a success or ensure that you're not going to do well. So, um, with that, uh, having the event bound 
and uh, sponsors and problem statements and, and, and all the other pieces in place, um, or, uh, we, we were able to continue to move forward. I should mention as part of that charting process, one is sort of um, pushed to think about, well, you're doing this event together. What the heck are you trying to accomplish? Why are you doing this? So in that charting process and the result of the scoping meeting, we decided that we hope to gain a more defined process with clear steps and a schedule for getting there to help guide the development of a new multi-year PPA and PNC list, again, the work plan between EPA New England and DES. So that will lead to a signed PPA and approved PNC list by October 1 at the time, 2015. That's about as detailed as we got in terms of sort of metrics. We did, and we didn't say, hey, we're going to work with all six New England states. We just said DES and, and EPA New England are going to work together. We wanted to gain a better understanding of the roles and connection of the PPA to the PNC list, how it tied in with the PPG and other agreements, and a, and a framework to serve all these necessary pieces. We wanted to get a better understanding of each agency's planning and budgeting processes, the timing of things, and, and the specific constraints relative to preparing PPAs and PNC lists and, and whatnot. We also want to identify specific individual and joint opportunities, opportunities for further streamlining procedures in the future. I'll tell you, I went back through the charter again, and I realized that we never really set any numeric goals for this event. That is, we never specified a certain reduction in days to completion or reduction in process steps or any specifics. We just said we wanted to get this thing done by October 1, and that's a deadline we've always had. We just had to specify it. I will tell you, this event was largely about getting to know one another, rebuilding trust, taking a look at the entire planning system in a holistic way, gaining a shared understanding of our internal processes, and the challenges we were individually facing begin in, 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 because we didn't have a good understanding of, that, of what each other was going through. And we finally wanted to begin to under, standardize and document these very long-standing processes. Again, this all started back in 1995. Lots of changes in hands. I'm going to do one more uh, slide. Uh, to, to really lay the groundwork for you, and then we're going to sort of dive into how the event proceeded. So bear with me, and we'll, 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 um, we'll open it up shortly. Okay? So let's talk about the initial project team. Before I do that, um, and again, the team is, uh, is, is so critical to the success of an event. The whole point of Lean is to get the right people the, with the right skill sets in the room at the same time, uh, facing the same problem. So I just want to ask my, my group who's on the phone right now, Remind me again how with a dozen smartphones in the room, we could not come up with a complete group photo where you could actually see our faces. So um, anyway, that happened, and I'm sorry. So we have a bunch of people looking down. Right? You can get a sense of who's on this team, and I'll, I'll actually tell you who it is. So while they're not actively on the team, the sponsors are absolutely essential players in any lean event. They, they make it happen by authorizing and getting the resources together. So Vicki Querum, our past assistant commissioner at DES, was the sponsor. And on the other side was EPA's Ken Moraff, director of EPA's Office of Ecosystem Protection. Again, they're not on a team, but they make it happen. We had two very skilled co-facilitators. At DES, it was Carolyn Russell, and at EPA, it was Steve Perkins. So thank you for your leadership. We appreciate it, and we could not have had the success as we had without you sort of hurting the cats, as they say. On the DES team was me, Wendy Waskin, who runs our PPG program, Susan Carlson, our Chief Operations Officer, John Duclo, who runs our Hazardous Waste uh, Management Bureau, and Ted Deers, who runs our Watershed Management Group, and Mike Bradley, who's in our grants program. On the EPA New England side, Christy Ray Simino, Jen Brady, Michael Oakes, Dave Conroy, Lucy Casella, Deb Hartstead, and Johanna Hunter. We had a very, very good mix of experienced, direct, and peripheral staff at all levels of the agency, and I think we had a, a fantastic team which made all the difference. And I'll tell you, so that was our original core team. Uh, I'll talk to you a little bit uh, down the road here how, why we expanded this effort to the region, and when we shifted to a more regional uh, perspective, you would take the original team, but bring in Steve Brujo and Ed Kim, um, on the technical SharePoint side, and on the New England State side, some of whom were on the call, I can't see who's on the call, Deneen Simpson of Massachusetts, DP, Carrie Hurstenberg, Vermont DEC, Nicole Lugley of Connecticut, Jeff Crawford of Maine, and Terry Gray of Rhode Island for the full New England contingent. I'm going to stop there and ask Terry to um, uh, open things up for a moment, and before I dive into the specifics of the event and eventually turn things over to Christy, I want to see if folks have any questions up to that point of presentation. That doesn't sound good. 
someone at the ocean. <laughs> Terry, can you hear me? Either at the ocean or inside a uh, washing machine. Uh, this is Vince. Uh, for those who are not um, in an ocean right now, um, did you hear any of what I just said? <laughs> just out of curiosity. Yeah. Hi. Oh yes, definitely. Okay, good. All right. Phew. Terry, are you having some technical difficulties? <laughs> give me a shout out. Give me a couple other folks saying they, they can hear, and I'll just proceed. Go ahead, um, okay. Vince. I've unmuted everyone, and okay. so anyone can we ask a question. That I was Anybody have a question? I have a question, but you're you're coming through loud and clear, Vince. So. Okay, good. And anybody else? Can they hear me? Okay. Uh, I can hear you, Vince. This is Carrie. I don't know if you can hear me. Phew. Oh yeah, no, I can, I can hear you just fine. Um, the Good. joys of the joys of the internet. Um, so while while we have a, a moment of clarity, it seems uh, any anybody have any specific questions? I know I'm doing a, a front-loaded brain dump here, but I really sort of want to give you the whole sort of lay of the land so that we can set the stage in the context. And now we're about ready to sort of dive into some of the event specifics. You, you um, if it makes going? you feel better, Vince, Nicole Ugly's chat comment is you're doing a great job. So. Oh, good. <laughs> She's giving Thank you a kudos. Yeah, shout out to Nicole. <laughs> Appreciate I it. Thank to you. Know I was here, so you know, I, I just doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Um, I, with that, I guess I'll uh, keep forging ahead. If any, unless anybody has um, any other questions or concerns at this point, I will tell you it was really interesting trying to condense an, a year and a half of stuff. Uh, very busy year and a half into um, somewhat a somewhat concise presentation. I mean, we're talking, um, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be kind of longish, and I will tell you, um, do feel free to to take a break um, um, and just watch any hot mics and in, in going into the restroom. That's all that can make that can be a problem for people. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I'm going to um, I'm going to trudge on if people don't mind. Terry, you want to go ahead and mute everyone again? Yep, I will. All right, thank you. All right, here we go. So. Phase one of the core project team, that's again, this was just EPA New England and New Hampshire DES staff. Um, we, we, we broke this up in a few phases. So we were able to find a, a couple of dates next to each other in January to, to begin our work together. And uh, basically, um, in this particular event, we started primarily with the PPA process. Uh, that was a pretty big junk, chunk to take on. So we brainstormed what a PPA is and what it is not. Again, this thing has been running since 1997 for New Hampshire and a lot of institutional inertia. Um, so we brainstormed what it is, what's, what is not. We included what the desired elements of one should be. And we determined, maybe it was sort of obvious, uh, but that a PPA is an umbrella document. It's an overarching mission document, <clears throat> excuse me, under which PPGs, the money, and their associated work plans, the PNC lists are nested. So PPA is big. It allows sort of everything sort of to happen underneath that umbrella. And we brainstormed the because we had to. We brainstormed the purpose of the PNC list, what it is and what it is not, and, and how it relates to the, the PPA. Um, we used the swim lane mapping technique to get a little technical uh, to develop the current and future state maps for the PPA process, and we just started touching on the current state for the PNC list. I'm going to define what a swim lane map is for those who don't. It's probably as obvious as it sounds, but I'll get to that in the, in the next slide when I show you what one sort of looks like. Uh, as part of this uh, first two days of the event, the, we brainstormed the barriers and the pain points for both agencies in developing PPAs and PNC lists, and there were a lot of pain points. Um, and, and challenges uh, that both agencies were facing, particularly with EPA with this fairly recent reorganization where they had a, the, the uh, tribal and grants group, and community group, really had to take on a whole new set of uh, activities and programs. And given the main purpose of the event, this may have been the most important part and an important step towards gaining a more complete shared understanding of the issues both agencies were facing. This is where we really started to find common ground. I will tell you, in New Hampshire, 
uh, particularly at DES, most of our lean events are not, hey, here's a standard event, uh, excuse, me, uh, excuse me, there's a standard process, we have SOPs in place, and we're just going to go back through to get some more improvements. No, usually it's undocumented uh, procedures that are long-standing, lots of inertia, lots of tribal knowledge, and uh, most of the time it ends up being, oh, that's how we do it? We gain, it's gaining the shared understanding that's probably the most important of the, of the, um, the focus of the work that we're doing. As part of trying to figure out how do you move towards a current, uh, from the current state to the future state of the PPA, we did some brainstorming about, well, it works best when. A blue sky or an ideal state would look like such and such. So we started to talk about the things that would make the PPA process better. And I'll tell you, this is a critical piece of the puzzle here as, as to why we expanded to the region. It was during this future state mapping exercise for the PPA when we touched upon places where the PNC list sort of fits in, where EPA proposed the use of SharePoint to do online negotiations. EPA had recently shifted over to Office 365, I believe, where SharePoint was part of that package. And um, this was a bright idea from the event that quickly took hold. And it's very important as a piece of the puzzle, as you'll see. I'd like to specifically recognize Dave Con Conroy, director of EPA's AIR program for this great idea. Dave, if you're on the call, thank you very much. Uh, it worked. Finally. We prepared an implementation plan at the end of uh, uh, the two-day meeting uh, for phase one in preparation for phase two and for moving ahead. And I'll tell you, in lean, accountability is key. It cannot be somebody said something about some th something that should be done someday. It is who will do what, by when, and it's very accountable and very specific, and this simple format um, works, and that's how lean can be successful. So the next... Um, piece I want to show you is the, um, the future and current state maps we put up on the wall for the PPA process. Um, it's a lean event uh, presentation, so this is the obligatory picture of the mess on the wall. This isn't clip art. This really is our work, although, you know, you can't see anything there. I just wanted to see, uh, show you that for our particular joint lean event, we use the swim lane mapping tool versus a more traditional value stream mapping tool, which we find a little bit more it's too complex for us to use, really, and do well at it. In a swim lane map, see the little person swimming, literally picture an Olympic-sized swimming pool with the various lanes, the blue and white the swim lanes, where each function and or organization has its own swim lane, and you stay in your swim lane. Processes proceed from left to right, and um, handoffs between the functions or the organizations take place between the various swim lane rows. And we found this easier to use, again, than a traditional value stream map. It's worked for us. Also, recall that I recall that the top swim lane map, you see two rows of uh, butcher paper, um, the top lane represents the future state, and you can physically see that it is a bit more streamlined with sort of less papers and less post-it notes uh, than in the current state. And time and time again, the value of physically mapping out the process on the wall with the right group of folks in the room has proven itself. Groups can literally and figuratively get on the same page through this visual and kinetic process. You're up, you're moving, you're talking. Um, so, so um, you know, never skip the visual process mapping step. And again, the swim lane works pretty well. So uh, we took the results of the, the mess on the wall and tried to put it into um, PowerPoint and or uh, um, Visio uh, mapping tool. And so as I mentioned to you, we didn't go into this event with specific time-saving or step reduction goals or outcomes. We got some of them, or we got the potential, which I'll talk about. Um, but we really specified some dates. During the event, we did set July 1, as opposed to October 1, which used to be the deadline in the past, as the deadline for a signed PPA. And um, I will tell you that October date we've rarely met in the past. It was more like January, February, March. But I will tell you here now for a variety of reasons, which, which I'm going to go into uh, during the lessons learned, we definitely did not make this aggressive deadline. While it doesn't feel great to miss a major deadline like this that we just set for ourselves, it ended up being okay. And stay tuned for more on this. This is an important piece. So remember July 1, PPA process. Remember, nope, we didn't make it. Hold that thought. All right, I'm going to give, go into a couple more um, slides on sort of uh, the, the detailed lean event itself, and then I'm going to break for questions if anybody has any. We'll see if the ocean comes back. So that was phase one, two-day event fo focused on the PPA processes and some of the uh, interrelated processes. Phase two happened uh, a couple months later, um, and I will tell you, uh, because we revisited um, the, the uh, lean event that far later in the process, um, and so much time had passed, it actually took 
almost a couple hours just to reorient and get ourselves sort of back on the same page. And this is probably why events are typically done in a single block. Usually within a single week, you hear those five-day events where you lock yourself in a room. I think there's a reason for that because you keep things moving forward, you keep focused, you keep tightly bound, and you don't have to start and stop and start and stop and all the, the time-consuming uh, steps that the, that that, that that takes. So at this meeting, it was focused mostly on the PNC list now. We brainstormed the ideal state. We completed the current and future state maps for the PNC list. Again, the work plans, um, sticking with the swim lane tool. And that was it was at this meeting when another key issue was raised. We talked about the national program manager's guidance shifting to a two-year planning cycle from a from many years of being an annual planning. Um, cycle. And this was a significant new piece of information that literally changed the course of our project, which I'll talk about in a moment. It also became clear at this point in the process that given EPA staffing constraints, that they literally could not afford to come up with a customized or boutique approach just for New Hampshire. Uh, it just wouldn't work. Uh, and they just pictured, you know, and I understand this, how could they possibly do this state to state and come up with special approaches? So as a result, of this finding, a primary tenant of our work together from that point on was to do no harm to the regional processes that were already working well, like the PNC list, for instance, which the region came up with together. Full transferability, excuse me, transferability to the other New England states became an important new rule that was really unbreakable. Uh, so this is a, um, a visual map of um, the PNC list process itself. I'm not going to go through the various steps. You can hardly see them, but again, we had an October 1st uh, deadline we set to get our PNC lists um, done, and uh, you know we actually didn't do too bad on this one. It ended up being mid-December, and I'll describe the, this in the results section. So we did okay on the PNC list, not so much on the PPA side. Um, I'm afraid to do this, um, but um, if Terry can open up the lines, um, I'm going to stop there for a moment and see if anybody has any questions before I leap into how we expanded this effort from just New Hampshire to yes and EPA New England to all the six New England states. So Terry, you want to try this again? Vince, I've opened up the lines. Anybody have a question or comment for Vince at this point? Okay. Silence is the voice of complicity, as they say. And please don't use that uh, come this fall for the election. Vote. Do something. Don't sit back and see what happens. Thank you. This has been a public service announcement. All right, Terry, you can unmute. I'm going to, I'm going to keep forging ahead. Hope, I hope folks are still with me. All right, so I, I gave you some breadcrumbs in the process as to why, um, why things sort of got injected that sort of changed our path here. So at this point in the process, considering EPA's move to a two-year MPM or National Program Manager's Guidance planning process and our interest in using SharePoint to aid in the work point work plan development process, we realized as a team and as the sponsors, uh, Vicki and, and Ken at the time, that it was time to expand the scope of our lean event beyond what was specified in the original charter. We made an educated decision and a risk to break the cardinal rule of not going outside of the chartered project boundaries. In this instance, the benefits appear to outweigh the risks, but you have to be very careful when doing this, however, because it really could backfire. In our case, it did not. It caused some issues, which I'll talk about in our lessons learned and touch upon in successes as well. But we broke the rule and decided to, to make this thing bigger. And I think you'll see uh, why and agree that it, that it made sense to do so. We essentially decided to go big or go home, as they say, by working towards regional consensus on a new two-year PNC list, which would align with the new two-year NPM guidance, and to also have the New England states agree to work together on a new EPA SharePoint site. Within a very short period of time, we were able to garner support from all six New England states. And this is uh, pretty, pretty doggone impressive. And I want to thank all my awesome fellow planning counterparts in the other states and certainly for, at EPA for really going beyond the call of duty to make this happen. When I think back to all that we were able to accomplish in, in a relatively short period of time, certainly by gov government standards, um, you know, we should all be patting ourselves on the back. So well done, everyone, on this. So what do we do in the space? You know what, I actually should advance the slide. That would be really, really good, wouldn't it? Sorry about that. Uh, in the space of a couple months uh, with EPA's strong leadership and serious commitment to, uh, by the six New England state environmental agencies, we ran a very aggressive, again, for state government, um, a regional pilot resulting in the development of a new two-year PNC list template with guidance, a new 
New England planning folder on EPA SharePoint site, and highly engaged state and EPA staff participants um, in, this, in this pilot. I'm going to have to single out Wendy Waskin here, who may be sick at home today. She may or may not have been able to call in. So thank you, Wendy. And the EPA team is particularly on this one. Christy, Jen, Michael, Steve, Ed, Lucy, Deb, others. Uh, yeah, I probably miss some people. You guys put in a, a substantial amount of time and effort to make the new PNC list and SharePoint sites a reality. And this absolutely would not have happened with, without all of you. So we thank you profusely again for all your hard work and leadership on this. And um, with that, I'm actually going to let um, Christy take over. I'll, I'll sort of work the slides here. But I wanted to, uh, so, so we're at the point now where we've expanded this thing to the entire New England region. And now, now it's about EPA sort of in the SharePoint piece. So I'm going to let uh, Christy, my esteemed colleague, take over uh, to talk about sort of the goals for SharePoint and the approach we took early on. So she's going to do a couple slides. I'll break back in, and then she'll pick up one more after that. So Christy, take it away. All right, this, this is Christy. Um, one thing I wanted to add, we were talking a little bit about the regional expansion, and uh, Lucy Casella from our team is going to share a few important observations. Thank you, Christy. Um, Ben's fantastic. I mean, having gone through the process, I'm amazed that you remembered everything and have captured it in, in a way that is, is, is cogent. It, it, it was, there was just so much going on. But in Thank you. The most you're very welcome. That's, um, it, was, it was a great, great, great project to be working on. I, I just want to make a, a response to the, uh, the self-critical, we missed the deadlines. Okay. The fact that we broke the charter open, that we expanded it to the states, that we introduced the SharePoint at the same time that we were doing all of this, I think were much greater gains than missing the deadlines. And so that's the only point I want to make. It, it, it's, um, it, it was tremendous. So. I'd, I'd take out the not bad, okay, in the future. That's, <laughs> that's all. Uh, thank you. Lucy thank and you, Christy, do you need me to make you the presenter? Are you going to display the SharePoint site? Uh, no, I'll, Vince I'll keep is, with it. Yeah, Vince is oh, going to help. Vince, you're going to do that. Okay, sorry. Right, right, no problem. No problem. All right, so, th so this is Christy. Um, thank you. And I, and I think it's important, too, just for folks um, who are – who may wonder the significance of all the states agreeing to jump in and expand on this. I will tell you, I had a few sleepless nights wondering whether or not we were going to be able to roll this out in a uniformed way or um, have to do two simultaneous different processes because our processes used to be for these work planning on an annual basis. So agreeing everyone to shift, to try this SharePoint, to try this new format was a huge saving. Because you might think, from what Vince is describing and from if you scanned ahead and looked at some of these results, you might think that we have a huge staff here uh, to be making this work. And we really did not. Um, so simplicity ended up being a key with how we were going to operationalize this. I would also like to mention um, Michael Oakes could not join us here today, uh, but she was really instrumental in being kind of the EPA head for working with our information technology team and really was at the you know, forefront of figuring out how to operationalize this idea in such short order. So I can't thank her enough for her role. Um, and sorry she couldn't join us here today. So, how did we try to make this happen so quickly? Well, because it had to be done so quickly, we tried not to change everything, just the most important thing. So for example, this priorities and commitments list, the PNC list that Vince mentioned, was already in Excel. So you keep some format similar, but you make some tweaks. Um, you add a few columns that maybe help improve the excuse me, operationally of it. Um, Team, team, team. We got a lot of help. Our IT folks, um, I'm not sure if they could join us on the call today, but Steve Boudreau, Ed Kim, absolutely tremendous champions. We would not have been able to pull this together. We started the design in March, and it was up in May. Um, pretty staggering for anyone who has ever designed a SharePoint site, especially one with the 
tremendous number of users and interfaces and complexities that this one had in very short order. Um, the second phase team that Vince mentioned earlier with the state partner from all New England states, they were tasked on a regular basis, here's what we're thinking of, does this design work good? They had to work very quickly to give us feedback to make sure that the steps were right, that was key. And Vince and Wendy and the whole New Hampshire team played a real critical role as beta test partners for site design. Um, I can't tell you how many times Jen or Vince or myself were on trying to pilot it, trying to look at, share a document, can you do this, can you do that. The, the team um, aura and the team spirit for this was very, very powerful and very positive. There weren't any naysayers saying like, oh, this is terrible, we should rethink this. <laughs> Everybody really brought positive energy, which made a big difference. So the original, the site was up and ready in May. Um, we did do some piloting, uh, and we did populate some of the documents um, kind of internally in EPA in May and June time frame. One of the things that we were worried about was consistency. For those that are familiar with SharePoint, um, there are different ways you can edit documents, and we made an early on decision to avoid duplication of documents to require everyone using the documents here had to use the edit online version of things. Now that's not perfect because it does limit some of the functionality that you could have, but it helps in that you reduce the save overrides or save conflicts. And because we were trying to move so fast, we were worried about um, that quite a bit. Then so I'll have you shift to the next slide and I'll give them a snapshot of what the site homepage looks like. So this is a view and a screenshot of the home page as it looks to someone who has full and complete access to the site. So site access is limited based on need. So states have access to the main home site, you can see kind of at the top left, um, and their own state folder. And when they log in, that is what they see. EPA staff has access to states that they work with. So it will vary. If you have responsibilities across all six states, you would see this view that you see now. There is also, you'll notice at the far top, a EPA Region 1 site. That actually is an only EPA site that we have for working documents. So as we're working on drafts, as we're finalizing things, getting ready to populate to the full shared version, it's a placeholder for EPA to be working on stuff that's not quite ready to be shared yet, still in the draft phase. If you take a look at the left-hand column, um, you can left-hand menu, you can see some of the features. Um, we use these features, um, some more than others. I don't think we use too much the uh, calendar at all or announcements, but the big one and the most important one are the documents. So that is where we have a lot of shared guidance, we have tips on how to use things. We have partnership, uh, performance partnership agreement guidance. There's the NPM guidance. National program manager guidance came out. That's where we were putting it there. Um, so I think that, you know, from our standpoint, again, this is something that we wanted to create as a framework that we thought could be expanded and modified over time. So it's an important thing to remember. We weren't trying to create the most perfect SharePoint site ever. We were trying to create a basic framework that would allow us to test out some of these great ideas that came out of Lean and really try to move us towards the concept of having the ability to do more things online and electronically versus very transaction heavy, passing documents, paper, just on the phone. And I think some programs like AIR had already been doing that but really the process had not caught up technology-wise with some of those advancements. And so this was a way to try to build off those best practices and give the opportunity, not a requirement, but the opportunity for other programs to benefit from that. I'm going to ask Vince to turn over to the next slide because we'll show when we talk about the priorities and commitments list, which is one aspect of the work plan for the performance partnership agreement for how Region 1 
manages our performance partnership grants. This will give you a little taste of what it looks like if you were working for New Hampshire DES and you needed to go in and now work on this work plan or from EPA and you needed to figure out what a work plan item um, was. I will turn it over to Vince. Um, in these state folders, although we're going to show you this one list, it's important to recognize that there are more key documents in this. We're just going to give you an example of the priorities and commitments list today. And it's important to note for those of you who are in the grants universe, even though we've created this shared portal, this does not replace the current requirement for grants.gov grant submission of forms and documents. It is a shared thing, but um, for those of you who might be wondering that, um, that's important. I'll turn it over to Vince and he can give you the live um, snapshot. No problem. Thank you so much, Christy. You've uh, encapsulated that well, and I will tell you uh, what I really latched on to is we, we did what was good enough, and oftentimes with being so constrained by staff and funding, good enough is often good, and uh, let's not let the perfect be the enemy of the good or good enough. So um, I think we achieved that with this project. I just wanted to show you, and that I, I I can't believe it. It worked. Excellent. Um, I clicked on a live link to show you what I see. I only see New Hampshire, right? That's the only access I have. Notice how the across the top where the cursor is, you don't see all the New England states. When I click on my New Hampshire folder, again, I am live on SharePoint right now. I'm extremely pleased. It's been very stable for the last several months, so that's excellent. So we're in New Hampshire's folder right now. I click over to our 1617 PNC list. Again, we said we shifted from a one-year to a two-year planning process. And you are looking at the one and only copy of New Hampshire's priorities and commitments list. Gone are the days of, I just emailed something, it's immediately obsolete, what's the final version, what's the current version, who has what. Um, we've, we've saved a boatload of time um, uh, by being able to have one single authoritative document um, to manage our work together. And you know what, it's not complex, it's not... Um, uh, particularly pretty, although the colors are kind of nice. So let me just tell you, uh, from left to right, what you basically have is at the beginning of a planning cycle, you have your 16 uh, commitment and your 17 commitment that is pre-populated by EPA. We shift over to the to the right here, um, or left, depending on which way it's going for you, I guess. Um, and basically, EPA starts a bidding. The states take a look at it. Again, this is New Hampshire proxy for all the states. We take a look at that those items, and if we agree with it as is, right off the starting block, we say we agree to it, we put a comment right in here, agreed as is, we link it to, uh, this is New Hampshire specific, we link it to our work plan, and we have a place to initial, this is Sarah Pillsbury of our drinking water program, and we put the date. And on the other side of the fence, um, we have uh, the EPA uh, program manager for drinking water, uh, who does the same. So it's simply, here's what EPA would like us to do for the funding, they tell us for 1617, we either agree with it as is, or we come down, or we negotiate. Now, these were all agreed as is, so these guys are really in great agreement. But here's another thing, you know, we can't commit to the following here. So here's an example where we didn't agree as is. We talked about it either face-to-face -face or on the phone while we're live in the document, and we keep changing the wording of the 16 and 17 PNC list items. Um, we keep changing it until we're both both agencies are in agreement. We talk about what it took to get there, and then we simply sign off on it. Um, there's staff contact names. So this, anybody who used to use the PNC list recognize this as the PNC list. We just added a few columns for, for uh, comments and for accountability. Uh, we'll shift to the right and then uh, skip out of the, the live version of this. Uh, just to tell you, we are still working on sort of, if something changes, if something changes in 17, whether it be uh, something from the exceptions only 17 national program managers guidance or through this new multi-purpose grant. Um, we're working out the bugs of how to reflect that into a previously agreed upon work plan. I think we're there, Michael and, and crew were able to come up with a, a good option and we're working on that, on that currently. The only thing I will tell you here, uh, we did shift to tabs. So instead of having one giant document, you can go right into air or water or waste, or whatever, or cross-media, and um, did it make you uh, go dizzy there for a moment? And um, we were able to um, to make this document very workable, but still, as Christy said, kept it simple, and, and it really did the job and gave us a substantive document control. Um, I'm going to switch back. I will tell you, uh, my one of my fears was that I 
jam this with content. So I'm going to speed up things just a little bit um, since I slowed us down. And that's not what I wanted. Hold that thought. Okay. So, Christy, I'm going to have you come back on. And um, there's some early challenges that we face with the SharePoint. Um, I'll talk about some of the successes afterwards. You want to just give us a few minutes of sort of the, some of the things we faced going through this process. This is Jen. I just wanted to quickly also um, point out the, the key thing with the new PNC list, which we were talking about, um, was the sign-off column. This was a new thing because in the past, you know, it was really hard to tell whether something was already negotiated and, you know, all set in stone. We had to keep going back and forth between the state and EPA to try to figure out, you know, is this the final version? So. I think that the addition of that, those sign-off columns for both the state and EPA were huge for us to be able to track things and make sure that this is the final, final language. And I just wanted to point that out, that that was a huge favor. Thank you, Jen. That's excellent. That's right. All right. So this is Christy again. So with challenges, um, you know, anytime you're doing something fast, there's going to be some challenges. So. You have to remember, EPA had never designed or used such a comprehensive SharePoint site. Um, we have around 300 internal and external users. So part of this was really being, you know, beta testers for SharePoint sites for the Environmental Protection Agency. So at times, we even had to engage Microsoft to solve some problems because we found things they had not anticipated because literally they'd not had, since the rollout of the new technology, a SharePoint site designed of this level of user interface. So what were some of the unanticipated problems? Well, I'll give you one example. Um, when you invite site permissions to a user, that link for them to get an access permission was only active for five days. Now, who in the world could have ever known that? It took us a long time to figure out why there were these delays. And I'm sure that you guys can imagine how challenging it was when we were trying to do this was right during vacation time, summer months. So this proved site access. Um, a lot of it boiled down to this invitation parameter we didn't really know about. Um, we also had some challenges on the moving towards kind of real-time negotiations. And I think for the programs that had done it, I mentioned AIR, Dave Conroy's uh, group in EPA, they had been doing kind of a real-time approach, so this worked optimally. But we were really asking some programs to move from paper versions or flow back and forth to reaching out proactively to your state counterparts, trying to negotiate language and then populate it. So that really was a culture change that we were trying to move. And so we had some mixed success with that. And because you're trying to do something new, lots of training was needed. So, and again, if the timing, for those of you who are in, familiar with grants, again, this was all hitting during the most evil grants processing time, you know, the last quarters of the federal fiscal year. So um, it was very, very challenging. But I'll pause and let, um, then move on to the remaining slides. Great, great. Thank you, Christy and Jen, for those great insights. We appreciate it. And um, so that was a, a you know this, the SharePoint piece, which ended up being a very, very important um, part of this expanded regional effort. I'm going to shift gears now towards, um, and I'm going to have to. Um, uh, I talked way too much in the beginning, so I'm going to have to do a little catch up now. Uh, so let's talk about uh, the some of the successes that we thought we got we gained from the primary work to sort of just the New Hampshire DES and EPA New England side of things. And I'm just going to quickly go down through these to pick up a little time. So and we started out wanting to gain a shared understanding of the pain points, common goals, and planning big picture. And I, and I think we did do that. And we had a much better understanding, joint understanding of um, what, what the, both agencies were sort of going through and, and had to go through and carrying out the various pieces of the puzzle. And as hokey or cliche as it sounds, we really did rebuild trust and improve our working relationships through our work together. So um, uh, I think it was very effective and successful in that sense. Um, you know, it's sort of obvious that this actual working on a real-time live problem was a great way to uh, further hone our problem solving and lean skills instead of working on how do you make a pizza or a peanut butter sandwich. This was real. 
uh, in the process, we, as you saw through some of the graphics, we standardized the PPA and P and C list processes, documenting them in writing. Uh, New Hampshire integrated the strategic disinvestment, dis, uh, investment disinvestment process into the PPA process. And um, because of our lean work that we did together, we were finally able to resolve sort of outside the formal lean event, previously challenging conversation about how to, how to handle the cash and tie it all together. So I think sort of what was not easy to discuss became much more discussable because of our work together. So it was an important investment in, with each other. And this is a, lean is always about a time investment. It's about getting that short-term pain for long-term gain, and you have to invest the time up front. Some of the other things we did, qu quickly going down through this, um, we've sort of front-loaded the PPA process, or intended to anyway, with more engagement and better communication with middle senior managers earlier in the planning processes. And to help us with that, we made sure that middle managers, the Tim and John and the Johanna and Dave um, on the uh, EPA side, uh, we made sure that those folks were on the team and, and that their, their perspectives were represented. So I think we did well with that. We've streamlined the physical PPA document content, the, the, the document itself, to only the information needed to really create that master overarching umbrella document. And we physically decoupled it, or more likely unstapled it, from the detailed work plans, which in New Hampshire at least used to drag the PPA processes out unnecessarily, maybe three to six months beyond October once. Uh, one rather, and this is where, and you know, sort of tongue in cheek on this, I I, I was overstating the the, um, the the challenge of of not meeting the PPA deadline, because I'm going to make a point shortly on that. But we had the potential when we set this out to shave three to six months off the PPA document process, um, and 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 this is something we were not able to achieve this planning round, as I said. But I'll explain in my lessons learned sort of why why that's really okay and. and, and Lucy sort of, she, she said the punchline, really, um, it's okay and it was worth it, so we'll talk about that in a moment. And this potential savings was helpful for everyone. It's a, it was a good savings for, for all parties involved. So we did achieve some time savings and better document control, a lot of document control with the online PNC list negotiations. I think we easily shaved two months off of that, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that in the next section. Um, and I'm not going to lie, there were home-baked home -based goodies. There were hugs at these meetings. We really, really joined together as a team, and it was it was, it was a really, really good um, personal and professional event. Um, now I'm going to shift to regional successes, and I'll I'll go through these, and then I'll have um, uh, Christy and Jen or, or Lucy or anyone else sort of want to chime in and, and, and make sure you know. Please do keep me honest on this. So um, when we expanded this uh, event to to more regional focus, we were able to quickly achieve regional consensus on the two-year PNC list and SharePoint proposals after only some emails, a conference call, and a little one-on-one -on -one follow-up. Again, I thank everyone involved for the great cooperation and flexibility to try a different approach and to make decisions quickly. Everything was during the summer, during compressed time frames, and I'll share a little bit more about um, that in a moment as to some of the things we were up against. And when you know more detail about what we were up against and then look at these through the lens of these accomplishments, I think they were even more impressive actually. So more specifically, um, EPA New England was, was, as we said, quickly established a new SharePoint site for all six New England states. Great job. This was no easy task, ripe with many, many moving parts. Over 60 EPA New England staff were trained and about 150 have been granted asset access to appropriate sites to use SharePoint. Almost all state staff about 130 have access to SharePoint site with about 90% successfully accessing, accessing the site and also working on the PNC list itself. Every state was at different stages of development in New Hampshire. Um, we were able to register about 25 of 40 people. We did all our negotiations online, real time with that live document. Various states were uh, in the, across the region were, were in different sort of phases of development but all end, end up using the PNC list. So. Um, let's see here. EPA, New England, and states conducted real-time work plan negotiations using these control PNC lists versus the new, new SharePoint site. The main benefit is when you're done, you're done. There's no more back and forth with emails and great confusion as to what the most current version is. As I showed you, there's only one version, no questions asked. The teamwork was extraordinary, as Christy said, during this entire event but particularly during the SharePoint regional piece of it, and not only within EPA, given how many staff they had working on this, but also between EPA and, and the state. So again, uh, kudos to all. We improved the transparency between EPA and the states, and we're able to move 
uh, more easily focus on outstanding issues and items, both internally and with state partners. Basically, you're able to quickly resolve the easy stuff. We agree to it, sign off on it, be done with it, and which allowed tension, um, attention to be focused on the more challenging work plan items or where the work really needed to be focused. And per Dave, Dave Conroy, uh, the air program negotiations, which are always pretty tight, were actually completed online with all six states within a two-month period of time, by mid-December, I believe, uh, maybe earlier. And that was the fastest ever. And uh, isn't it great that it was his idea to try SharePoint and it actually really, really worked? Um, I want to go one more uh, regional success slide and then I'll ask my esteemed colleagues at EPA to sort of uh, ground truth that or weigh in or add. Uh, let's see here. So um, in, in terms of success, three states completed their work plan negotiations and sign off by mid-December, significantly faster than in prior years. Again, that's the, the work plan itself. We ended up doing as we hoped. We did no harm to working re regional processes like the existing PNC list. So what worked for New Hampshire? worked for um, the other states as well, and I'm sure that IRA will be very proud of all of us for being able to do that. And while I'm not necessarily called out, we did gain some, or EPA did gain some important lean and e-enterprise, quote unquote, beans for the region, as headquarters definitely wanted the regions to shift to two-year planning. And they also, you know, Gina McCarthy said, she wanted the regions to engage with states on lean projects. Again, IRA, we got the twofer on this one. I'd like to observe that without our expanded lean work, we should all be scrambling right now to complete our FY15, excuse me, FY17 PNC list instead of being on this call. It is because of all the hard work we did last year, investing in a two-year work plan that we can enjoy a bit of a reprieve for this year. I don't know about Christy and crew, but um, I'm not hearing or seeing much in the way of any major changes for 17. So again, we were done last year and we're sort of still done. There may be some small reopeners that come up. We have a process in place to handle those. They're just about there. And we're going to be adding some of the results of the multi-purpose grant proposals into the PNC list. But uh, really, that's, um, it's kind of quiet. Uh, which where it should be a very busy time of year, so I'm, I'm enjoying the, the reprieve. And you should know too that the SharePoint concept, because of how successful it was with this project, it's been, um, uh, we've created a SharePoint site for the regional QA roundtable, and also there's a, um, a joint e-enterprise project between EPA and the New England states to create a more collaborative or coordinated regional air monitoring network. So they got on board and created their own SharePoint site. I'm going to um, stop there for a moment and, and see if Jen and Christine, and Lucy or any others have uh, any other sort of good successes in terms of the regional project itself. I think you hit them all, Vince. Thank you. All right. All right. Okay. I'm going to keep blasting through here. Time is um, uh, coming to a close soon, and I do want to have some question, question and answer time, although we have opened it up throughout. So, um, actually, let me, let me pause there for a moment before I go into lessons learned. Um, does anybody on the call have any questions up to this point? Just in case we run this right to the end, I want to make sure we get some, some Q&A out of this. Terry, are we unmuted? I'm unmuting folks. There's one person, Susan Carlson, who needs to put her PIN number in in order to get audio control. Oh. Uh, I could but bang on the wall since in the wet next room. Unmuted, and I don't have any anything in the chat box or question Excellent. Box. This is just so darn crystal clear. That's excellent. Thank you. And again, you know, Anybody I consider this. Anybody have any questions for Vince or comments at this point they want to offer? Okay. I'm going to just right. keep on blasting away here. All right. Um, I'm actually not going to spend much time as on this slide. Uh, next slide, but. Do you get that picture? This is the place where, um, again, Lucy sort of alluded to it. This is the place where we talk about how we, we, we bit off more than we could chew potentially. Um, while all this was happening, it's the summer vacation months. It, uh, you know, end of, uh, beginning of and end of um, grant year closings and beginnings, um, DES is actually kicking off its new PPA, uh, the, the, the 1618 PPA with a joint senior leadership team meeting. Um, we had, um, uh, we were drafting the physical document, we were working on our PNC list, we were working on the, the implementation plans for the lean event, the strategic investment disinvestment process was happening, we had an after action meetings, we're working on a reopener, so we took on just about everything possible. So, um, you know, here, here's the event in the, in the nutshell for me, and I'll sort of stay with the squirrel sort of nut theme here. If I do capture this lean event in a nutshell, I would say that working on this project felt like trying to simultaneously build an airplane and construct the runway, runway while taxiing down it at the same time. 
hope you sort of can follow my thinking on this. With this picture in your head, I'll continue on with some lessons learned. So, it's a big hairy project. So, on lessons learned, uh, with lean and I guess with most things, I guess you you, know, you want to focus uh, or maintain focus and momentum. Keeping the event meetings as close together as possible for continuity's sakes is really important. And our phases were sort of spaced out, just just so many busy people and, and the time of year it was, um, that it was hard to get it all done in sort of one tight time frame. So because we were f so spaced out, it was hard to sort of prime the pump again at the beginning of phase two. It took a little more time. I, I guess it is what it is. But try to keep them as tight as possible. And uh, one must respect the charter and the original boundary set. Um, if you start losing that rule, um, things start getting crazy in the world of lean. So, um, you know, for instance, the PPG kept trying to creep in. I, I blame myself. I brought it up many times, but our skilled co-facilitators were relentless. Thank you, Steve and Carolyn, for reminding us, um, or to, in reminding us that the issue was off the table for now, and and or we would talk about it at a separate date or a separate event. However, it is very important to be open-minded and flexible so that you can take advantage of important opportunities, opportunities as they arise. That is, sometimes you have to strike while that iron is hot. Dave said we should try SharePoint. We agreed. We saw, saw the NPM guidance was shifting. We saw the writing on the wall, and we were able to, as a group, agree to shift um, to, a, to a larger event. That said, there are some downsides to allowing, quote, unquote, scope, scope creep. Yes, we were able to accomplish much more than we originally envisioned by expanding the work beyond the original project, but we had, uh, and we had a, made a conscious decision to take on some short-term discomfort to make um, some long-term gains here at the regional level. By doing this, we may have taken on a bit too much in a short period of time, and we're therefore not able to gain all the expected or hoped for time savings in the PPA development process, or, or, or and we weren't able to get it done as quickly as we thought. Again, it was definitely worth the effort. Whatever you do, certainly uh, be realistic in your uh, setting your goals and deadlines. And um, you know, I'll throw in a random recommendation here as well. Take a group photo at the beginning of your event. It's a nice way to memorialize the team, and you can actually see their faces. And yeah, there's actually a phone feature on a smart, uh, a camera feature on a smartphone. Who'd, who'd have thunk? Some additional lessons learned: uh, get your affected staff involved early and often, and make sure you provide ample training for them. Communicate frequently throughout the process, and EPA, EPA did a great job with training their staff on use of SharePoint. And we tried to do the same in New Hampshire, but could have done a better job on that. And you can never train enough. Certainly, be patient and persevere. I guess that's good general advice for most things, particularly in the environmental world. Um, be agile, and, and agile—that that's actually a software development um, term, I believe. But it's sort of the fail quickly and respond quickly. The SharePoint pilot worked well because we were willing, all willing to try some new things and all parties provided prompt feedback. Imagine if we tried something and then three months later, oh, that didn't work. Um, or, or, or you just didn't hear back from enough people. We tried stuff, we got right back to one another. We were very accountable and we were able to fail and succeed in rapid succession. And I like to think we could, could have given the, the private sector a run for some money on this one. Here's, the, here's the, the, the biggest thing in a nutshell here. Don't let the skeptics uh, get you down. Perhaps you will see some irony in the fact that we undertook this lean event to improve the PPA process. And as it turns out, this ended up being the longest it's ever taken us to complete the PPA. Skeptics will latch onto this and say, I see, I told you so, lean doesn't work. And I will emphatically tell any skeptics that the delays were not as a result of doing this lean event, but were due to positive scope creep. We made an informed decision to do this and tackling a bunch of moving parts, a lot of them, all at the same time. It was also due to not maybe addressing likely trade-offs earlier in the process and maybe being more realistic in our deadline setting. July, boy, July 1 sounded really tight, but this was an ideal state, so you write down what you would like to achieve. Um, and despite all of this, I still believe that it was and will be, and I'm, I know Lucy's on board with this, totally worth all the upfront investments we could we were able to collectively made, excuse me, we collectively made in this effort. And I'm, I'm pretty darn sure that in the next PPA cycle, and certainly in future work plan cycles, um, that we will start to see all uh, and get closer to those ideal states. It just took on too much. And you know what, be like Ira. Again, greatly missed. And always try to get those valuable twofers and threefers. Always try to maximize your results by involving and sharing and transferring knowledge to others. And none of us at this stage of the game could go any of this alone. We just can't afford to. And don't ever be too busy improve, to improve. And, and don't be like these guys. You know, does anyone uh, has anyone ever felt this way? Maybe every day. It seems like lately. So so hopefully not. Right. And 
I'm going to, um, uh, it's getting close to the wire here, I apologize, we're running this clock right out. Here's some testimonials, I mean, you can, you can, you can uh, uh, listen to me and Christy and others, actually we are going to listen to Christy. <laughs> um, these are some testimonials from, uh, from EPA and, and DES staff, uh, these are uh, middle and upper managers, and I'm not going to read them specifically, but I really do believe that um, these testimonials should prove that uh, we really did accomplish what we, the very aggressive things we set out to accomplish together. And, um, and, uh, and, I, and I thank everyone, and would not have worked without everyone's uh, deep sort of commitment to making this a success. Um, and you know what, it's not about the recognition, but um, it's really nice to get it. And, and uh, we, uh, we had an internal awards process here at DES in last December, and uh, we won the Exemplary Lean Project Award. And silly me, I didn't give my friends at EPA enough lead time during the holidays, and they weren't able to make it up to Concord to receive this award in person. But EPA is in that photo in spirit, and I'm sorry we weren't able to get them up here. Uh, but just I did try to make up with EPA, and I actually did hand out certificates last uh, this past February when we had a uh, lean debrief or after action report to, to describe what worked, what didn't work, um, how could we improve and what would we do with next steps. That's another important part of Lean is to do that plan, do, check, act and continuously improve. Um, we also did this at the regional level while I have you on this topic and had a conference call with the New England states um, to get their feedback. And uh, EPA did a great job of putting out a survey to all the participants, uh, participants to ask um, how things went and, and those results were very impressive and, and, and also was built into the successes. For those not able to attend, we do see some of our friends in the region here. Uh, we we did um, uh, win an award um, for the Environmental Award Award event this, year, this spring at Faneuil Hall. We were honored to be recognized along with our friends at EPA and the other New England states. And I love our, our new acronym, the State Performance uh, Partnership Improvement Team, SPIT or SPIT. Um, that's kind of fun. And you know. In, in closing, I mean, this was truly a great project to work on. Uh, we got some positive, hopefully lasting results, and I think we will eventually see the full effects of this project in future planning cycles once, once things settle out a bit and then we catch up. We absolutely made some great friends in the process and even better work partners through this lean event together, and I certainly look forward to working on future lean e-enterprise e events. And I will say this. Um, after we catch our breaths and take a little bit of a reprieve here to um, um, to, to, to rest a little bit. I think, uh, I think I'm, I'm still sort of mentally and physically exhausted by the amount of work we did on this project. Um, I'm going to stop there for a moment. Um, I, I, did, I didn't do what I said what I would do, it's just to ask uh, um, if, uh, if I've captured everything up to this point from, uh, from EPA's perspective. I'm going to stop there for a moment and I'm going to close with some next steps and hopefully just a few minutes of Q&A. So uh, Jen, uh, Christy, Lucy, others, anything you want to add at this moment before next steps? Nope, we're good. Very good, very good. Um, I know I'm speaking in a bit of a breathless fashion, but I have to catch myself up here. So um, next, next steps. Okay. So um, we talked about a lot of stuff on this call. Uh, we accomplished a lot. We, we, we did do a lot of things. So the next steps in terms of the regional and New Hampshire specific project was um, and now that we've done this lean um, presentation, I think we can develop a joint case study more easily now. We've articulated what, we, what the problem statement was, uh, what the desired outcomes were, the team has been, has been um, uh, working together, so, and, and, we, and we know what our uh, successes were and where our challenges and lessons learned are. So we have a great deal of information to uh, put together in a case study, and we can never close an event out in, at the DES anyway in the state of New Hampshire without sort of summarizing it in, in a case study. So I know EPA had a draft one they were working on, and I think we tighten that up a little bit and we have a good way to memorialize this. Uh, we need to, and we did start already under my, uh, Michael and Jen and Christie's leadership, to develop a modified PNC list to handle FY17 reopeners, um, to tighten up document control a little bit, and to factor in how we're going to represent the new uh, multi-year, uh, excuse me, the multi-purpose grant um, uh, approved projects. So uh, we have a, a draft, some a draft guidance and, and a draft amended P PNC list and to follow the same rule, we're not going to be uh, changing it very much at all. It will be very recognizable. Um, we, one of the big things we need to figure out how to work on together and it's getting time very soon is to how do we do end of year reporting? This is going to be some columns we need to add for that and some uh, procedural rules and, and spreadsheet rules. That's an important one. 
Beth Graves of ECOS has asked me a number of times, and I just wasn't there yet. Uh, there's been some national uh, interest in this work we did, not necessarily on the PNC list um, per se, but because that's a region one thing, but on the SharePoint piece and some of the PPA streamlining stuff. So uh, with this, with some slight modification, we can probably do this at a national level. Uh, Beth would be happy with that, and ECOS. And we need to follow through on our, we, we actually have in our performance partnership agreement three areas for collaboration, as we call them. One of them is, hey, we should continue to do some lean e-enterprise projects together. So we have a written commitment by our senior leadership team to do more work together. And again, I'm more than happy to do it. I just think I need a bit of a break, as does um, EPA, I believe. Um, just to um, finalize and then open it up in the last, that last five minutes for some Q&A, and I apologize for it not being longer than that. Um, Here's our, my contact information and Christie's as event co-managers. Um, uh, through any one of us, you can ask additional questions or share any other thoughts you might have. Uh, and through me and Christie, uh, we can certainly pass on any comments or concerns to the, the rest of our uh, esteemed lean team. All right. And so this is a formal, with only five minutes remaining, sorry, um, uh, portion of the lean webinar for questions and answers. So Terry, if you can open, up, open that up again, and we'll um, see what people think. Okay, uh, Vince, thank you very much. It's, I, I've opened it up. Everybody's unmuted. So does anybody have a question, comment, addition they want to offer? Nobody? Come on. Nicole, you have to have something. She's still there. I thought she had to leave early. She may not be there. Do, do we have do we have more than, do we have more than two people left on the call? That's that's yeah, that would be a measure of success. People have my, stayed on the call. That's good. My metric was just have people at least hang in there. <laughs> uh -huh. Justin, are you have any comments? Uh, no, I mean no questions in particular. But um, really nice job, Vince. That was uh, it looks like it's a great project. I think so. I think so. I, 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 um, I, uh, if we can, I'd like to do something like this again, as I said. And, and uh, there's, you know, you, you go, th you do a lean event, and you sort of get a, the, in that first pass, you get a, a whole bunch of changes. And again, once we, once we take a breather, and maybe we can take a look at this in, the, in another year or so, and say, is there any other things we can, uh, that we need to t tweak or fix? But um, now, now that uh, I think we have a, a great partnership with EPA Region One again, and, and um, I don't think there's anything stopping us from making any future improvements, really. The one that we have an interest in, and we put this in our applications to the Eco Skills Exchange, is uh, Section 319 process. I don't know if you have any interest in that as well. But. Well, um, when you're at a point where um, you're looking for potential state partners, because, I mean, you can't obviously do all states at all time. Well, actually, our, our right. event we did. Um, but certainly uh, reach out and, and we'll see if uh, folks in our 319 program, Steve Landry is new to it, uh, Eric Williams left after 24 years, but um, uh, he went out to uh, Salem, Oregon, but let's see. Yeah, cool. And, ju and Justin, real quick, sorry while I have you, I mean you're, you're um, running a, um, a, a lean group that sort of expanded beyond the environmental agencies and, and um, certainly as you see common trends or, or interest in working with the states um, through Turi or otherwise, me, Christy, just uh, just keep us posted. Yep, will do. Other questions, concerns? Um, I may have overwhelmed you a bit with so much information crammed into, um, um, it, it, it actually back in the 80s, I think there was um, um, some, some made up words, uh, it was sort of a fun thing, but there was something called a blivet. I won't tell you exactly what it is, but it's 10 pounds of stuff in a five-pound bag. So <laughs> I sort of did that to you. But you, you now have intimate knowledge of our lean event, and you know as much as, as we all do about this work together. Hey, back in the 80s, we were using overhead projectors, and we couldn't have done a webinar. <laughs> <laughs> well. Um, I just wanted to see, Christy, did you or Lucy or Jen have anything you wanted to add in terms of lessons learned or anything you want to contribute? <clears throat> Okay, uh, I, this has plenty of lessons learned for all of us. This is Lucy again, but um, I think that since he's, he's free this year because of the uh, savings from um, not having to do um, an annual uh, planning process uh, this year, um, what we could be working on is finding some, some better metrics and some meaningful metrics 
in terms of what the savings were from this project. I mean, we did so, so much. And we didn't start out with a baseline and then be, and being able to measure against it. But there are other ways of being able to measure um, what the savings are. And so in that regard, I think that's something that we may be interested in looking at here in Region 1, just, um, just trying to um, capture the savings while we can measure them in this particular time frame and before the process changes again. But that's, that's all we have here. Lucy, that's a great point. That's a great point. I think um, uh, in the draft case study we had, we did see um, and, and did take some credit for, while well, we didn't start with that in mind, we did see a reduction in the number of steps um, you know, the physical post-it notes on the screen uh, in the development of the PPA process. And we did see real time savings in the work plan development side. And as I said before, and I think you agree with me, I'm pretty darn certain that we're going to get that three to six month time savings for the next PPA. Um, uh, if we do what we said we'd do, you know, streamline the document to only the essential components, don't try to physically attach the first year's work plan to the document, I see no reason why we can't substantially shave time off. And I'm okay saying that we'll, we'll, we'll get there eventually. Unfortunately, you know, it'll, it's three years out before we'll, we'll really recognize that. But you're right. I think there's, there's probably more tangible um, uh, metrics and, and savings and successes here than, than I've represented. Uh, most, many of this is, much of this is qualitative, but still, still valuable, I think. And this is Christy. I was just going to offer a couple observations. Um, one is I want to encourage people. I, I know it's hard when everyone is resource constrained to be willing to take on something like this. So, you know, I applaud everyone. I mean, my staff was very constrained. Um, Vince, the New Hampshire staff was constrained, yet we did this time has resulted in some staff savings. And I'll give you an example. For us, even just that change in the priorities and commitments list to have the sign off, what we were able to do for the first time is present a snapshot to different programs and senior leadership about how many items were still remaining that needed concurrence. So it let us be more efficient which is key when you've got less and less time. So for those that you know, often hear in their senior leadership, oh, well, we just don't have time to do this, you will get savings out of it, and it's worth the time. And those measures, I think the, the senior leadership support on both sides was really unwavering. I mean, in EPA, um, all the way up to Kurt and Deb were huge, huge champions of this. Um, the, all the office directors um, were very impressed when we did report out and we were able to give them a more comprehensive snapshot of where we were on our work planning. Um, so it did have some you know, scalable benefits uh, internally that maybe we didn't highlight but really made a big difference. And we can't also thank Vince enough for those of you still on the call. I think you can see anyone that has this kind of passion and dedication and set of skills um, helps mobilize everyone to act better and to be better public servants. So um, there's a reason why Vince led this presentation and call, and is we owe it a big thanks to him for stepping up and being that champion for us. So thank you. Oh, thanks, Chris. Yeah, that's so nice of you. And it was, uh, again, great working with all of you guys. And none of this would happen without full participation by all. And, and um, Terry, I appreciate you uh, making this call happen and your leadership at the regional level. Um, and as we discussed, we'll have to think about some changes coming down the road. But um, I appreciate everyone being on the call today. And, and uh, you know, keep, keep doing good work and don't be too busy to um, get better. And keep Ira, uh, Ira in mind. Let's get those two for, just continue to get those two for, <coughs> and not, not go this alone because we can't afford to do that anymore. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. And everyone, I hope you have a great day and a great remainder of the summer. We'll talk to you soon. Vince, this is Terry. Yes, I just wanted to add something that's that Carrie Hengstenberg um, wrote in the in uh, as a as a comment, um, he wanted to say thank you. He says Vermont has benefited from this event. The two-year PNC list is a huge savings, and SharePoint site did save time despite the tough beginning. So no that was his comment. So <laughs> I think her, we're about okay. to wrap up the <laughs> webinar. Is that right? That's it. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. We will be posting. Vince's slides, Vince and um, Carrie, Christie's slides, sorry, 
And we are we did record this webinar, and I will be working on trying to post the recording as well, so that folks who weren't able to join us could could listen in. So again, Thank thanks to all the presenters and all the material, and, and particularly to Vince for all of his work to prepare for this. And um, take care, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you all. Take care.